All right, 2.2 .2 is about parallel lines. And so we've talked about lines and how to determine if they're parallel or not. And so now we're going to talk about the types of relationships that work because we have parallel lines. Okay, so if you notice in this little drawing over here, um, I have line L and line M. You guys see line L and line M? And they have little triangles on them. Do you guys see those little triangles? Here and here? That's the symbol for parallel. So that means parallel lines. Okay, so that means parallel lines, that little triangle symbol does. And so with these two parallel lines, we have all of these angle shapes taking place. So we're going to talk about different angle shapes. I'm going to um, do something here. Uh, let me pause for just a second. Okay, so the first types of angle pairs that we're going to talk about are angle pairs that are congruent. So that's your blank right there is congruent. What do we know that congruent means? The same, right? And the symbol for congruent is this equal sign with a squiggly. So all of these types of angles we're going to set equal to each other. So we're going to write little equals little which means we're going to set them equal to each other. Little equals little. The angles are the same. So the first type of angles we're going to talk about are vertical angles. Do you guys remember what vertical angles are? They're up and down, right? They make the X. They're across from each other, whichever way you want to write that. Make yourself a note to remind you what vertical angles are. What'd you say? Uh, that would be vertical line that I wrote there on the board. That was talking about vertical lines. So when we talk about vertical angles, do you guys remember they are across from each other? They make the X. So what's an example of vertical angles in this diagram that we have? What might be a pair of vertical angles? Five, what'd you say? Are five and six across from each other? Do they make an X? We could talk about 5 and 8. Do you see how they make the X together, 5 and 8? Okay. So angle 5 and 8. What else? Angle 1 and 4. Angle 1 and 4. Okay. Uh, Samantha, what's another pair? Um, angle 3 and angle 2. Angle 3 and angle 2. Good. They're across from each other. The last pair, Quentin? 7 and 6. Perfect. So remember, they're across from each other. They make that X. Okay, so the next three types of angles are new types of angles. Okay, so corresponding angles, we're going to say corresponding angles are on different vertexes. So they have a different vertex, and we'll talk about what that means in just a minute. They have a different vertex. They are the same position. Try to write small. One is inside, interior. One is exterior. One's interior, one's exterior. They're on different vertices. So if we look at our diagram over here, remember these right here are vertices, right? These are our vertexes or our vertices, the starting points. So if I talk about angle two, angle two is in the top left, or I'm sorry, top right. So which angle down in the second set of vertices is on the top right? Six. six. Would you guys agree with that? Top, oops, top right would be angle six. So do you see how they're in the same position? Top right, top right. Yeah. So angle two and angle six 
are corresponding angles. That means that they are the same. Another way students can remember this is that they make the letter F. And look at what I mean by this. So if I'm looking at this diagram and I say the letter F, do you see that we could talk about this angle down here and this angle right here? Right? They make that letter F. Do you guys see that? The capital F? Oh, yeah. Right? So I'm talking about this angle down here and this angle down here. That would be the capital F. So that would be angle 4 and angle 8 are corresponding. Angle 4 and angle 8. And then Quentin said which ones? Angle 5 and angle 1. So if I try to do the F, it's upside down and backwards. You guys see that? It's still capital F. 5 and 1. Angle 5 and angle 1. What'd you say? 3 and 7, I would also agree with. These are the hardest to find for students. And off to the right, I'm going to put a big F, or I'm sorry, off to the left, in case that's the letter you would like to use to help remember it. If you just want to remember one's on the inside, one's on the outside, you guys understand what I mean by inside and outside? So if we talk about these parallel lines, this is the interior. Would you guys agree with that? In between my two parallel lines is everything in here. And everything out here is the what, do you think? This is going to be my exterior, right? So when we say one's inside and one's outside, let's look at what I mean by that. If I'm talking about angle 1 and angle 5, 1 is on the outside and 5 is on the inside, right? One's inside, one's outside. So corresponding angles, one's inside, one's outside. All right, let's look at another group. Then we have what are called alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles. Anybody know? Like 3 and 5. Okay, like 3 and 5. So alternate interior angles, not quite. They're on a different vertex. Five and four. Okay, let's write this down. They're on different vertex. They are both inside or interior. They're both interior, but they're on opposite sides of what we call a transversal. Oh, so it'll be like angle three and angle six. Yes. Five and four. Yes. Okay, so on your diagram up top, we didn't mark this. That's my fault. This line right here is called the transversal. Please mark this on your diagram up top. This line is called the transversal. It's the line that connects the two parallel lines. So line in is the transversal. It's the line that connects the two parallel lines. So if alternate interior angles they're on the different vertex, but they are both inside. So here's my insides, right? So somewhere inside here, I have to deal my two angles. But they are on opposite sides of the transversal. Anybody want to guess what my two angles are? On the inside, so we have to look on the inside, right? Angle three and five. Three and six are on opposite sides. You guys see that? Three and six are on opposite sides of this big line. So three and six are called alternate interior angles. So that would be angle three and angle six. And these letters make, I'm sorry, these angles make the letter Z. Watch this. See how I'm making a capital Z? 
and 3 and 6 go together. I could make my z go the other way. Oops. It would be dyslexic z, that's right. But what other two angles, uh, Belinda, would we be looking at? If we know that 3 and 6 are a pair, what might be my other pair? So we have to look on the inside. So 4 and what? What's on the opposite side? Opposite side of this line? 5. Good. So 4 and 5 together are alternate interior angles. They're all the same. They are the same measurement. So these letters make the letter... These angles make the letter Z. Okay, the final group are called alternate exterior. So, again, same thing. They're on a different vertex. Patrick, are you writing any of this down? Except instead of both being on the inside, they're both on the exterior. And they also are on opposite sides of the transversal. Because if you think about alternate, that means opposite. Okay, so now, here are my parallel lines. I don't want anything on the inside, none of the angles on the inside. What'd you say? Okay, here's my transversal. So, you said 7 and 2. Do you see how they're both on the outside of the parallel lines? And they're on opposite sides. You guys see that? You're on the opposite and they're on the uh, outside. Crystal, are you with me? Yeah. Okay. So angle two and angle seven. And then Brianna, what might be the other pair here? Um, one. Excellent. Angle one and angle eight. Remember, all these types of angles are congruent. So corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior, they're all congruent. They're all the same. So if I told you that angle 1 was 100, what else is 100 degrees? 8, eight right? Because it's alternate exterior, and those are congruent to each other. All right? Let's talk about the other side of these angles. So the other pair of these angles. Okay. So now we've already talked about angle pairs that are congruent, so let's talk about angle pairs that are supplementary. Do you guys remember what supplementary means? Excellent, supplementary. So that means we're going to add these together to make 180 degrees. So little plus little equals 180. So we already talked about what a linear pair is. Remember, <clears throat> they are adjacent or beside each other. And a linear pair makes a what? A line. Makes a line, right? Do you want me to erase or maybe move it over? It's kind of hard to see there. Okay, so what is an example of a linear pair here? Crystal, what's an example of a linear pair? They're adjacent, two angles that are beside each other, and they make a line together. What would you say? Two and four. Do two and four together make a line? Anybody else agree with that? Yes, I would agree with that. So angle two and angle four are a linear pair. They make a line together. 
Patrick, what's another pair that makes a linear pair? One, three. What'd you say? One and, three. One and angle three. I'd agree with that. Remember they make that little horizon, that sunrise thing? So angle one and angle three. One angle one and angle two. Okay, and then Brianna is saying angle one and angle two together. Did they make a line? Yes. Yep, so angle one and angle two are a linear pair. Belinda, what's another linear pair here? Okay, so do you see over here on my diagram picture that this angle and this angle together that when I connect them together they make a straight line here? Do you see that? that together this angle and this angle make a straight line angle? this angle here and this angle here angle one and angle two together the bottoms of the angle make this big straight line right so what might be another pair look down here at this group what might be a pair down there that together make a straight line excellent angle five and angle six I would agree with that Quentin, what's another pair of a uh, linear pair? Seven and eight on the bottom of them. Good. Samantha, find me one more pair. Six and eight make a line together. Excellent. And there's a few more, but we don't need to spend time finding the other ones because this should be review. Okay consecutive or same side interior angle. So this is a new one. I don't care whether you use the word consecutive or whether you use the word same side. It doesn't matter to me. They're going to be the same thing. So consecutive means right in a row or same side interior. So these angles are on different vertex, meaning they can't be right next to each other. and they are same side. So if I'm talking about same side interior, first of all, if I'm talking about interior, I'm talking about three, four, five, and six, right? Those are the angles that are on the inside. Crystal, do you need to stand up? You all right? Okay. So, and they're on the same side of this black line here. So Patrick, what two would you say maybe are consecutive or same side? Five and three. Do you guys agree with Patrick that these are on the same side and they're both on the inside? Three and five. They're on the same side of the middle line, which is called the transversal. And they're on the same side. Now, these two, remember, added together, make 180 degrees. So I'm going to say angle three, well, the measure of angle three, plus the measure of angle five. That looks like a six. equals 180 degrees. So angle three plus angle five makes 180 degrees. What other two angles might be same side interior? Angle four and angle six. Measure angle four plus measure angle six equals 180. So What'd you say? Yes, consecutive angles equal 180. These make the letter... Let me move my cursor. Yeah, they make the letter C, right? Because, look, if I'm talking about 4 and 6 together, they make a capital C. I mean, it's a boxy C, but do you see? Do you see? <laughs> Not today, huh? Okay. So they make the letter C. What? I know. Okay, so what do you think about same side exterior? What might be a pair of my same side exterior, Quentin? Think about same side, but they're both on the outside. One and seven. One and seven. So I would agree with Quentin. One and seven. One, they're both on the outside of the two parallel lines. And they're on the same side of the transversal. So I know that the measure of angle seven plus the measure of angle one equals 180 degrees.
Crystal, what's my other pair here? Eight and two, perfect. Measure of angle eight plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. So this is a lot to remember. So because this is a lot to remember, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna pass out in just a minute uh, kind of a handout to help you a little bit. Okay, but here's the trick is deciding whether they're congruent or whether they're supplementary. So if they are, listen very carefully, if they are same side, they are supplementary. Everything else is congruent. If they are same side, they are supplementary. Everything else is going to be congruent. So let's look at an example here. Let's go over to the back. On numbers 1 through 10, it says to identify each pair of angles as corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior, same side, vertical, or linear pair. So, what about number one? What do you think number one is? Okay, they are supplementary, but that's not an option. So, they are both same side, but look, are they both on the inside of these parallel lines? Okay. Nope, don't, stop guessing. Together, they make a what? Together they make a line. Do you guys see that? They're on the same vertex. This is the hint. They're on the same vertex. They both are at this bottom vertex. So this would be a linear pair. Okay, what about number two? What, do you, what kind of angles do you think they are? I have one person says vertical. Do they are they beside each other? They're across from each other, right? If they're across from each other, what kind of angles are they? Vertical. Don't get too far ahead, Patrick. All right, let's look at number three. I want you to try three and four on your own. You can look back. Look at the type of angles they are. I want you to try three and four on your own, please. Look back at the ones we've already done. Look at our examples. Your option choices are at the top in the directions. Okay, hey, what do you say about number three, Patrick? Are they on opposite sides of this line? They're not on opposite sides of that transversal. They're all, look up here at the board. Do you see how they're not on opposite sides? They're on this. They're both on this side, and they're both on the inside. So, what would we call that? Yes, same side, interior. Who wants to try number four? Brianna? Um, a Our a linear pair, remember, are on the same vertex. Um, These are on no, this, th this one and this one. Um, one's on the outside. One's on the inside. There's only one pair where one's on the outside and one's on the inside. It is corresponding. Those are those are corresponding are the hardest ones to find. Okay, look up here for just a minute, guys. Notice that the X is in the top left, and so is the Y, top left. Do you guys see that? Top left, top left, one's inside, one's outside. So these are corresponding when one is inside and one is outside. Okay, try five and six.
Okay, Samantha, what did you say about number five? Vertical. Does anybody agree with Samantha? She says they are vertical. Yep. One person agrees? Brandon, you agree that they're vertical? Mm -hmm. yeah. Belinda? Mm -hmm. Do you see how they make the X? Mm -hmm. What? Not really, but oh well. Okay, not oh well. That's not, that doesn't work in my classroom. Look up here at the board. Do you see how? Okay, I'm going to show you, which is why I asked you to look at the board. So if you are looking at these two angles, we're talking about this angle and this angle. Do you see that together they are across from each other, right? They are diagonal from each other, and they make this X shape. Do you see that? So any two angles that make the X shape and are across from each other are called vertical, okay? Okay, number six. Um, Quentin, what did you say for number six? Same side interior. Does anyone agree with Quentin? Yeah. I would as well. They're both on the inside, and they are on the same side. Okay, try seven through ten. You got 15 more seconds. Okay, Crystal, what did you say for number seven? Alternate exterior. Why do you say alternate exterior? Okay, so they're on the outside. They're on different sides. And they're on different sides. Good. Same side exterior for number seven. Number eight. Patrick, what did you say on number eight? You said same side exterior? Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I wrote... Yeah, I did. I wrote the wrong thing. Sorry. Alternate exterior. I'm sorry for number seven. So, Patrick, what did you say for number eight? Alternate interior. Why do you say that? Okay, they're both on the interior. Excellent. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. Excellent. So this would be alternate interior. Good. Number nine, Samantha, what'd you say? Mmm, tricky, right? One's inside, one's outside. If one's inside, one's outside, they're always going to be corresponding. Good. Belinda, you want to try number 10? Yeah, let's try it together. Are they both on the inside or are they both on the outside or one of each? Are they on the inside or the outside of the two lines? They're both on the inside, right? So now they're either alternate interior or they're same side interior. So if I'm looking at this red line, are they on the same side of the red line or are they on one's on the other? I can't hear you. What'd you say? They're on the same side. So these would be same side interior. 